So every community has its own culture and its own dynamics and its own characteristics and its own values. Um, and I would say that, that that is true coast to coast to coast in Canada. Um, but there's a couple of basic structures that are in place in, in most communities. And that's um, how the natural leadership evolves in a community and who the influencers are, um, who it's really important for a candidate in a campaign to connect with. And um, so if you're um, looking at a ward race and some municipal elections are um, like a citywide slate and so they don't have geographic boundaries. Um, if you're looking in a community like Toronto, you have city wards, but then you've got school board wards that are different definitions that may or may not line up to other federal or provincial boundaries. But you basically need to identify your turf. So the, whatever the geographic area um, is that your campaign is running in. And then you need to figure out who are the influencers on that landscape. And in a lot of communities, um, there might be residence associations, um, and they could go by different names, neighborhood associations, ratepayers groups, tenant associations. Um, but they're essentially forms of local democracy where people get together and talk about the issues that are important to them on a regular basis. And they generally um, usually do some fundraising, they usually do some events, and they usually get involved in advocacy on local matters. Um, in some communities, that might be a group that's organized around um, managing a park or a community center or the arena, or there's, there's all kinds of ways people organize. Uh, but the campaign team and the candidate should sit down and map out all of those groups. In some communities, there are charitable organizations like a Rotary Club or um, other, other kinds of groups that are involved in community building. You may have um, community centers, parent councils, arena boards, um, sports leagues, um, also local business communities. Um, so in Toronto, we have a fairly structured approach to business improvement associations, but they're basically like along the main street in any community. Um, it's where all the local business owners um, come together and they actually impose a levy on their own property taxes, which generates significant resources for them to be involved in community building. It also gives them a fair bit of political clout. Um, and so the team should know who the influencers are in all of these different groups and outreach to those groups and begin a dialogue. If you have time for your candidate to go for a walk or a run with those people or sit down and have a coffee with them or drop in their monthly meeting, um, all of those things are really great ways to connect. Um, and even, I think it's really important for the campaign to connect and to hear where those um, community members are coming from and what their priority interests are and to be thinking about how that aligns or doesn't align with their campaign. Um, I have talked to people who, um, well, you know, when you say, have you, have you mapped out who your influencers are in the community? And they'll rhyme off a list and then you can say, oh, but what about that bring back the whatever group um, or save the schools or like whatever, whatever the group is in their community and that person will go, oh, they would hate me. They don't like my politics. So it's like I'm not. I'm not going to them. And I actually think that's problematic because I think, I think the active community is building is about um, meeting people where they're at and going in with an open mind and an open heart and really listening. And as an elected representative, your job is listening and being an advocate on behalf of the community. And it it starts right at even your exploratory process about why you want to be the can candidate and why you want to represent a community.